Sunderland season finished on a sour note. It's fair to say this year, defeating the playoff final against Charlton, the last minute defeat of that it was heartbreaking. I don't know about you, Tom. Heartbreaking is exactly what I would uh, what I'd use to describe it. it. Was I actually? I'm quite a pessimistic Sunderland fan most of the time. I actually went into that game feeling quite confident. I thought that we were slightly, we, you know, in general throughout the season we were slightly better than them, even though they finished above us. And I felt that having played at Wembley before, I thought we were going to win it. So heartbreaking is exactly right. And to be honest, I'm not sure if I'll get over it until the first the first game of next season. So obviously we're going to talk now about the summer gone last year, go through the early season form, all the way at the end, the playoff final, talk about the checker trade, um, which obviously was a, a great weekend for all Sunderland fans. And we'll sort of finish off with a bit about the future, but this is Tom White from Sky Sports News, massive lads fan. Absolutely. How long have you been a Sunderland fan? Forever? Well, my whole life, 35 now, nearly 36, so all of that. You're that, in that, the, that the whole time. Yes, I was, I was told when I was born, my name is, your name's Tom and you support Sunderland, and that's <laughs> it. There's, there's, there's no changing. And I wouldn't change it, actually, despite the... Uh, hard times yeah well that makes the good times sweeter exactly exactly we, do, we just need a few more of them yeah. <laughs> but we'll start obviously last summer uh the ellis short reign ended we've got new owners Stuart donald charlie methvin they brought in a new manager jack ross and it was it was quite a an interesting start to sort of well it was end of may uh, last year pretty much a year ago today what did you make of that initial takeover and sort of the excitement around it how open the owners were do you do you find it it was, it was very different than anything we'd ever seen. Well, it, it was very strange when we found out we had new owners in the first place. I remember seeing the statement about Chris Coleman going, and I remember at the time, because I really liked him, being a bit upset. Um, and actually, a little bit like Ellis Short's made a bad decision here. But then the other statement came through to say we had new owners. And so it's like, okay, now everything makes sense, new start. We had wanted a change, regardless of whatever positives and negatives you can say about Ellis Short, a change was needed, and that was very exciting. But back then, we didn't know anything about the owners, so I was like, oh, okay, what are we getting here? Because I, even researching Stuart Donald, I couldn't really find much. I liked the fact that he'd been involved with football at Eastleigh before, yeah. so that was a definite positive. And it was only really his first news conference, and then he went with you to, yeah. to, the, to the podcast <laughs> as well, and listening to him and Charlie Methven, it was obvious that they were ready to get their hands dirty and turn it around. Because what I've said before is they've, they came in to a broken club. And OK, we haven't gone up. They have fixed this broken club. So although we didn't know that at the time, it was certainly an air of positivity. And I loved and still love the openness that, yeah. that they do. Because you don't get that from from many owners. And Jack Ross, obviously, you talk about fixing the broken club. I think he deserves maybe as much credit as anyone else. He came in, he had 10 players to start pre-season, or nine players actually had to get somebody to fill in to be the 10th man in five side. So Jack had a big job on his hands in the summer and had to bring in a lot of players to sort of patch together a squad. Do you think he deserves maybe more credit than what he gets? Because it's well publicised that some that do have the biggest budget in the league. It's well publicised that they did spend the most money in the league. But that not, that wasn't necessarily the recipe to fix what went wrong here. No, we've got the biggest budget because we've still got the, the legacy of the fact we're in the Premier League only a few seasons ago. So yeah. we've still got players on, on Premier League wages. That That's why the budget's so big. It's not like... Um, we've been in League One for 10 years and suddenly thrown a load of money at yeah. it. But Jack Ross, I was I was happy with Jack Ross because I actually, I do, I like Scottish football. A lot of people don't say that, but I follow Scottish football a lot. I suppose mainly because I, sometimes I have to at work, but I like it and I really liked what he'd done at St Mirren. Yeah. So I thought it was a good appointment. He, he did see Sunderland as a step up. Some managers, it's been said a lot in the past that managers have come to Sunderland saying we're thinking that they're doing us a favour by being here yeah. having to be given loads of incentives to be here paid a lot of money given bonuses for, for keeping us up not moving cetera. to the area is a big one not moving to the area a lot of a lot of managers haven't done that um, and, and Jack Ross saw this as a step up and he you could tell he was ambitious. You could, you could tell he didn't think this was the pinnacle of his career, but that's fine as long as he takes yeah. takes Sunderland with him. So I was always optimistic about this. There was a few managers out there who I would have been quite happy with, but that one there, having seen what he'd done at St Mirren and 
listened to to what other people had said about him, I thought, okay, this could be the, the, the right man at the right time. In regards to signings, I'll read through them. Yeah. Tom Flanagan, Chris McGuire, John McLaughlin, Ali Mozturk, Rhys James, Dylan McYork, Glenn Leuvens, Jack Baldwin, Luke O'Nine, Charlie White, Max Power. They were the guys that came in in the summer. And to be honest, there isn't really many misses there. They all seem to come in and, and do a job at one point this season. I think the yeah. recruitment was pretty good considering it was very much... You had a month to do it, yeah. two months to well, do the, it. There was, there was next to no money spent in all of those that you've said. I was the, the one that I really wanted, and this well before the takeover, well before even even before relegation being confirmed from the championship, would, when I thought we're going to go down anyway, I said we've got to sign Dylan McGeoch. Yeah. Really liked him. I, he was the one I was most delighted about of all of those. But um, when, when it comes to, in terms of how much we spent on them, very, very little. Like you said, They've all they've all played their part. Leuven's hasn't played for for a long time, yeah. in fairness, but he might have been good in the dressing room. He, he might have played his He's part. Character, else, yeah, it? well, he might have played his part elsewhere. And remember that we did actually get some money in for selling players yeah. and loaning players out. So it was it was a summer. It was it was a busy summer. But if you look, look at some of them, I mean, Flanagan had been here before, so it was a safe one. Chris Maguire was actually stepping up a league, yeah. but he's played a heck of a lot better in League 1 than he was doing in League 2 um, I didn't know that much about Ozturk actually beforehand other than that super yeah, derby goal uh, that, he, that yeah. he scored and I had after a few games I admit that I'd written I, I yeah. had, had written him off and a lot yeah. of the fans had I don't feel guilty saying that because I had um, and he's come back in and, and proved to be good as well and alright you can't say that anybody has has uh, well, n- nobody's like shot us into, into the championship because we didn't go up Mm-hmm. But I think they're all good signings, and how many of them, how many of the ones that you've mentioned, how many of their values have gone down? Mm-hmm. All right, that's how you have to look at it from from a business side of things. How any of them come in? Like um, Stephen Fletcher came in for twelve million, went for free, even though he's a good player. Craig Gordon nine million, went yeah. for free. They've all come in, and they've probably all gone up yeah. in value, with the exception of Leuven's, But that was that. that was a he was a free one. transfer, yeah. Idea, so. And he was, and and it was possibly the last season of his career. Early season form, obviously we all remember that that Charlton game on the opening day, 1-0 down. Um, last minute winner from Lyndon Gooch, probably Karma then came for the playoff final. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. But that day kind of felt like we, we were back a little bit, like Sunderland was roaring, you know, kind of back into relevance. Yeah, and the, the see, the, the attendance that day was still quite low. It's just under 30, was it? Yeah, oh, was it? Okay, right, okay. Well, that's more than I thought, actually. Um, but what I was going to say was, either way, that roar yeah. when we scored the winner was absolutely... It was just... We hadn't had that since probably probably beating Everton 3-0 under Sam Allardyce yeah. to stay up. And, well, the week before, Chelsea 2-1. Well, that, that, that roar was obviously... 3-2, that Chelsea uh, 3-2, sorry, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah that That's was, correct. I could be right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that, was, that was even bigger, uh, that roar. So it, it just felt like, oh... It was like, like the club had been... Reborn, yeah, and optimism there, and I, I've remained optimistic throughout the season, really, up until up until we, we we didn't go up. But that then was just an incredible feeling, and we hadn't had it throughout the whole of the season before. And the early season form was good, really. We we, we drew the next game against Luton, but we followed that with wins against Scunthorpe, Gillingham, Wimbledon, mm-hmm. all quite convincing wins. And the early season form, I would say, was good. It looked like we settled into the league quite well. Um, I mean, I know the Gillingham game, you were there, weren't you? And, and Wimbledon, yeah. And Wimbledon. So, I mean, what was your thoughts coming away, particularly the Gillingham game where we won 4 1? Did you think, yeah, we, we are definitely going to be. Yeah, I did. But, I mean, it, it's funny how the Luton one, I thought, I can't believe we've only drawn one all with Luton. I know. Right. And now look, not That's many good teams point. took. Yeah, I mean, away from home, it ended up. Mm-hmm. Bit, if we'd known then, we, we might have been a little bit happier about it. Gillingham won was a fantastic day for, for several reasons. It was bright, hot sunshine. The, the stand at open air, It was the, the stand was packed full. I think they were still on general sale the day before. Yeah. But by the end, you couldn't, by, yeah, by the end out. of that day, you, you couldn't get a ticket. I think it held 4,000. We were all there. We just took over the place. It was brilliant. And we went 1-0 down, mm-hmm. which, which at, at that point was a bit of a theme. And winning 4-1, and it just seemed so easy. It actually seemed in the second half like we could have gone on and, and been more ruthless and yeah. got, got 5, 6 or 7. And I thought that was brilliant. And then Wimbledon, when I went to that one, again we were 1-0 down. 
and they were good that day. Yeah, we Wimbledon didn't play very well. Did no, we, we didn't. Catamol comes in and scores twice, and I thought, right, we didn't play well, and we've just won a really tough game against big, strong, physical opposition. Yeah. This is the makings of a side that are going up. That, though, in terms of Wimbledon away, that was a, a rubbish away day in terms of the. you don't have many... There's not much space. They cram the away fans in. Yeah. And I don't know whether you noticed, I'm quite small. <laughs> I couldn't see a thing. I missed the whole first half. At half time, everyone ran to try and get a beer. Realised that they weren't serving alcohol. But while that happened, I just snuck into yeah, the front. Yeah, you got in a good seat. It was right in there for, for <laughs> Catmore's two goals. So in the end, it was all right. But it was... Uh, well, not used to that, having been in the Premier League yeah. for so long. And you get the nice grounds. Yeah. <laughs> we had a bit of an early wobble, though, um, as well. After that, we lost to Burton Albion. Um, and that then triggered a run of seven wins out of nine but that Burton Albion game that kind of felt like okay welcome to League One this is what it's going to be like you know you, you've got to make sure you're at it every game you can't just turn up and win 4-1 like we did at Gillingham I mean, you think that Burton Albion game was almost a pinnacle moment at that early stage because it sort of showed with it maybe we yeah. are the kings of the league I, I think we needed it because was that was that when Maguire scored to make yeah. put it back to two one and we yeah. couldn't find an equaliser, and that was some goal as well. Yeah, goal um, of the month that year, that month. I, th- I think he's probably got it a, a few times, hasn't he? Um, yeah, I thought. Well, if you look at the form afterwards, like you said, we needed that because maybe we're getting a bit too big for our boots. Maybe mm-hmm. we thought we are going to walk this league, and it was like, well, no, you're not because we've just lost that game. And Burton, especially considering the season before we were dreadful, we actually won away yeah. at Burton. <laughs> um, with uh, Vaughan, was it Vaughan and Honeyman that day? Or was it? Uh, so, oh, I don't know. Uh, James yeah, Vaughan definitely scored. Yeah, Azoro's in my mind as well. So th- I think we actually needed that. I think that really helped us lose into Burton. Yeah. Obviously, at the time, it didn't feel like that, but I think we needed it. And obviously, them seven seven wins, just some of them. We won away at Shrewsbury 2 0, away at Doncaster 1 0, away at Plymouth 2 0. Barnsley 4-2 at home as well in November. Yeah. So they were, there were so many big wins there and big moments. It felt like we were grinding out results. That Barnsley game was the best 30 minutes we played mm. all season where we were, we were I think, 3 nil up after half an hour. Yeah. Um, and that was a day where, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Josh Madger later on, but he was just electric that yeah, night. Yeah, he was. And, and it's funny how we won that game 4-2 and I still said after the game that Barnsley are the best team I've seen all season. Yeah. Right, And we won 4-2. So it's it's quite remarkable to see how 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 we ended the season when at that stage I thought, look how good they are and and we beat them. It, I mean I must admit, Barnsley can probably feel aggrieved that there was two goals in it because it it yeah. wasn't really I mean, like were, that. But like were, you say, Magic was the difference. We were three 0 up and they got it back to three two. Yeah. And everyone in the ground was nervous and we yeah. we got a fourth goal on the counter attack. But that was a game where I thought beating them four two it did feel like momentum was going to be with us at that point, yeah. especially with the run of form that went before it. Um, but around Christmas, uh, we 46,000 for Bradford. Yeah. Won one nil. wasn't a great game, but that was a, a special occasion for Sunderland fans. So it's a moment where fans will go, I was there when there was 46,000 for I was Bradford. there when the, when the goal line uh, wasn't yeah. straight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the Bradford away game as well, actually, and Bradford gave us a really hard game. And they were... The thing is, this is the proof of how teams rate raise their game when they're playing a club who've been known as being Premier League club because at Valley Parade yeah, well it's not called that anymore it's Coral Window Stadium I think it's, yeah, it's, very, it's, hard. Valley it's very hard yeah. to, to not say Valley Parade um, where that was so tight and again I mean they had a penalty saved John McLaughlin saved yeah. a penalty against his old club and well, they missed, 10 men. missed yeah they, uh, they missed a, a sitter on the rebound Max Power got sent off they got someone sent off but it was later on and we still won it 2-1 and they were probably better than us because they raised their game. And Boxing Day did exactly the same yeah. thing. They went down with a whimper. Yet against us, they gave us two really, really good, good games. And we were one nil up. Then there was the the, the ghost goal. Yeah, let's the, call it because it was, was. It, was a, it was a mile over yeah. the line, right? So we, for once, we got a little bit of luck. But they completely raised their game. But like you say, the the the, the praise Sunderland fans rightly got for being there that day. Mm-hmm. And the the attendance and the gift of incredible. football that went with it as well, which it, was brilliant. Yes, because I, I, I couldn't go because I had to work. But I got, but I got, I bought a family some tickets as well, and it felt so good to yeah. be able to be able to do that. So many people I know did that as well, and it was it, it just felt great. And we the, the fans 
quite rightly got praised for it and, and we won. And then New Year's Day, Blackpool away, we had 8,000 fans oh, there, that, which again was... That a, was the one I was so, I was so devastated to miss that one. I, when we got relegated, I said, right, Blackpool away, that's a weekend yeah. away, it's going to be brilliant. Then it was New Year, New Year's Day, I'm going to have to work, aren't I? Which I did. And I was devastated to miss it. And the amount of people who I've spoken to who were there, saying it's their, their best day as a, as a Sunderland fan. Yeah. In League One. Now that tells you how good some of these away days have been yeah. this season. It's not all negative. It's, it's ended with a negative. When I look back on this season, my, my overriding thought is I've really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's part of it, some of these away days and how the fans have actually really... There's been a real togetherness about the fans for most of this season. Yeah, and that day, having it, like we had two-thirds of the capacity that mm. day, which is crazy. When yeah. we're away from and home. actually Blackpool fans were great with us as well, weren't they? They, they said, look, we've got real problems with the owners. Please have a great time. Really enjoy Blackpool. Yeah. Enjoy the game. Don't spend any money in the ground, though. And just, I think just most Sunderland fans. And I think the Sunderland fans could have said, you know what? We understand hard yeah. times at football clubs, and, and and actually, it was a it was a good atmosphere between the two sets of fans. And then in January, we're going to talk about Josh Madger leaving. Mm-hmm. I think it's fair to say, in hindsight, that that moment probably you could say is what cost us automatic promotion. You see. I mean, you've done 16 I don't goals think when you left. Yeah, you could have got I know. 30. I know. I don't think it's as simple as that because you never know. He might. He might have. He might have actually said, "I'm going to sign a new contract," but then not signed one, and his head wouldn't have been on it. Uh, his mind wouldn't have been on it. Sorry, and he might not have have kicked on. He was maybe having a great half of the season, and might have had a, a dreadful second half of the season. So we don't know. But certainly, if you look at it like that. 16 goals, if he'd scored another 16, yes, yeah. we probably would have gone up. Um, I liked him. He wasn't supposed to start the season. We were supposed to sign yeah. a first-choice strike. Well, Charlie White was injured for a start. He did so well. He got a chance. He took his chance, which every youngster who comes from the academy has to do it at any club, not just here. He did it, and it ended up costing us because we had to let him go. And that has really... that's uh, That hurt. But once we got to deadline day, I still felt that... Will Grigg was an upgrade mm-hmm. and so at that time I, I can't say oh I saw this coming because I didn't because I thought that I thought that, that Grigg was going to be the one to score the goals to, to go up more so more so than Madger it's just such a shame that he left the way he did and there seems to have been issues with with his agent and it's quite hard to bear I mean the run of, drew a lot of games this season it's the sort of theme of the season I think we ended up with 19 we drew 7 of 9 through January and February mm-hmm. even when uh, Josh was still at the club that was the point where you know we weren't losing games but it just felt like we'd ran a little bit out of gas yeah I, I think that's fair to say I think we maybe thought right we're up near the top now at some point in that stage we might be in the automatic promotion places we might have thought right we need to just stay here so go 1-0 up just win just make mm-hmm. sure you, you keep it at 1-0 which in that, that that's something that everybody will learn from next season that we can't do that now when we're in the Premier League under especially Poyet and Allardyce to a certain extent Advocat as well when we went 1-0 up it was like right don't mess this up Yeah. keep it tight if we get a second one it's a bonus but just just win 1-0 win whatever it takes but we were playing class teams and we were down the bottom we weren't used to winning mm-hmm. at the top I would obviously like to see us kick on. Now, I don't know what the issue is there. That's something that whatever's gone wrong from... It's something that the coaching staff will sort out, I'm sure of it. Maybe it's a mentality thing in the players because a lot of them have been in that position in the Premier League yeah. when we were holding on for a win and to a certain extent the Championship as well. And I think that's where those draws came from. We, we sat back and didn't have the same quality of defence as we did under Allardyce and Poyet and that's maybe where the problem happened but I, I think there is no chance of that happening next season and I think actually I think next season we might be quite comfortable and we followed that run with actually six wins from eight which right. I was surprised when I was researching this that we did go on that run because it felt very much like the second half of the season was a bit more doom and gloom yeah um, but then you know we'd be Gillingham 4-2 Bristol Rovers away 2-0 Plymouth at home 2-0 Walsall at home 2-1 Accurate away 3-0, Rochdale away 2-1. It was a good run there where, I mean, when we beat Rochdale that day when George Honeyman scored the last-minute goal, 
it looked like we were going to be the team that was going to go up. Yeah, well, the, the moment that I said, right, that's it, we're going up, was actually Accrington, 3-0. Uh, yeah. Um, because we'd lost the Czech Trade Trophy final. Everyone was a bit down. Um, and I went, I went to Accrington. And this, this is the thing about our fans. We, everyone has spent a fortune at Wembley, right? You've got accommodation, you've got your ticket, you've got drinks, and we'd lost. Went to Accrington, there was still a good amount of away fans. It was freezing, it was raining, it was on a Tuesday night, all right, in a place that is not that easy to get yeah. to. And not only were the fans in great voice, really great spirits, possibly up there with Gillingham for my favourite away game of the season, away day of the season. And we also won 3 0. So the fans had the right mentality, and clearly the players had the right mentality as well, because we were so comfortable. And at that point, the, the, my mate who I went with, I, I said to him, Yeah, we're yeah. going up now. And that's actually, well, after the next game is where it all went wrong. Yeah, I mean, there was any of them games, I mean, the Gillingham 4 2, that followed a run of two straight home draws, one of them against Akron, mm. which was on Sky. Yes, I know. We drew we were 2 0 down, drew 2 2. But we that. Could have won at the end. We I know. really <laughs> pushed. That was it. We really, really pushed at the end. And the Gillingham 4 2, that was, a, again, a crazy mm. sort of game where it felt. It felt like that day because we did, you know, we I think we went up, we conceded, we went up again, we conceded, mm. and we somehow came through it and got the win, especially after a run where we drew my last two home games. Felt like that run of games there was when we were going to push up, and it was such a shame that it kind of came away after the Rochdale game. Yeah, I th- and because we got it back into our hands, mm-hmm. um, and in fact, it was it was in our hands right until Peterborough scored that late equaliser against us. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I think maybe just that moment just deflated everybody and suddenly they felt pressure. I think throughout the season they always thought this is going to be fine. And suddenly it was like, oh, it might not be fine anymore. We're, we're relying on other people. And just before then, that Peterborough game, we, we drew 1-1 with Burton and then we lost that crazy game against yeah, Coventry 5-4. Yeah. And that was the day... God, that makes me want to... <laughs> God, I just want to cry. Yeah, that was, a, that was a hard day to take as a Sunderland fan. 3-3 three, three at half-time. Well, it, you see, you were probably there. It was, it were, I would argue it was harder for me. I was at work and we didn't have a feed of the game. It wasn't considered a big enough game to have a feed of. All right, you've got all the Premier League, all the Championship. You have the odd League One game. Oh, and you've got all the Scottish Premiership as well. At three o'clock on a Saturday, you've got them all, mm-hmm. right? And Sunderland, for a lot of the season, the second half of the season, were on. Right, that game we weren't. I had no way of watching it. And so I was watching it on Soccer Saturday like everybody else in work. And it just kept, they kept scoring, we kept uh, yeah. equalising. They score, we equalised like, well, it's written in the stars, we're going to get a winner here. And then when it came up 5 4 Coventry, I remember just sunk, it was a chair like this, a little bit lower down, I just kind of sunk to my knees, like head on the desk. How have we done that? And then I had to obviously go on air for three hours <laughs> and show the goals twice an hour as well because it was such a big game. That was absolute pure heartbreak, that one. And. We followed that defeat actually with a 2 0 win over Doncaster, mm-hmm. which I thought showed good character from the yeah, players to keep it clean. Doncaster sheet. are good. Yeah, and we, we got a clean sheet as well. Yeah. They changed the centre yeah, backs yeah. that day. That was when Ozturk came back in, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, and, and I think that showed a lot of character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it did. So, you know, again, you're thinking, so that must have put it back in our hands, didn't it? At that stage, I think it might have been back in our hands when we did that, when we won that game. And, yeah, so we had bad result and fall back from it which we, which had been happening it just fell away and then final four games of the season two draws Portsmouth draw Peterborough draw the, yeah that the, the Peter- Peterborough one was, was hard especially when you scored I think we scored 88 minutes and they scored about 92 yeah when, when that Max, was a hard one Max Power scored and I was I, I was working away in that one I was having to work away it sounds glamorous because I was in Las Vegas but I was doing a pool tournament and it was 8 a.m. until midnight every day, and it's just in a room with no windows because mm-hmm. it was it was pool. <laughs> so I was able because I was abroad. I was able to watch that. Um, actually, was able to watch both of them on my phone, despite obviously having to try and be working as well. And the people when Max Power scored, it was just pure elation. I wanted to like jump up and down, scream and shout. Um, and then they people went and equalised, and I was looking, thinking, like hoping the referee's whistle would blow, yeah. the players would stop, and there would have been some sort of foul, and it, I mean, there wasn't. And, it, and it, so, so obviously it never came. And then that's, it's funny how I'd gone from only 
not very long earlier saying we're going up. At that point, I said, oh, we're in the playoffs. Because even if we'd beaten Portsmouth... It was still slim. I actually thought, well, I don't think Barnsley are going to slip up. And and, um, and, well, and and they didn't as well. But even when we drew against Portsmouth, it, it didn't have the same kind of bad feeling as it did against Peterborough. Um, and it's, it was just very hard to take. And then mathematically we couldn't get automatic against Fleetwood. Yeah, the Fleetwood the Fleetwood and South End games were a pretty upsetting way to end the season yeah. because we we had really we'd lost maybe three games up to that yeah. point. And to lose them final two it, it felt like we were going into the playoffs on quite a low. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's it's right and there's an argument to say, well, we should have rested some players then, but there was actually an, enough There was a small there was, chance. There was enough yeah, th- th- there was a small chance, but there was also enough of a gap in between Certainly, that Fleetwood game and the first playoff game, you know, maybe again, I think against Southend, he did actually rest a few, but there was enough time to kind of get ready for the playoffs at that stage. But you're right, we weren't used to losing, and then we lost a few games, and I wonder how much of a, an effect that on, had on the mentality as well. And then, obviously, on the last day, Southend stayed up, which was it was brilliant to see them stay up. Yeah, um, it's nice to, if you do lose the game, it's nice to see that somebody got such joy out yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that, in a club that you don't have any yeah, feeling towards, exactly. any bad feeling towards. But that meant that we actually finished fifth with a yeah. win. We would have finished third, and at that moment, it felt like as Sunderland fans, we were like, "Oh, we've, we've blown our chance. Yeah. We're going to play Portsmouth. Portsmouth, who it's fair to say had our number. You know, they got a win in the league. They beat one penalties in the Czech trade. They drew at our place. And I like their manager. I really like Kenny. Yeah, Jackett. they've got a manager who's been up through the playoffs yeah. before as well. So it felt. When we, we drew them in the, the playoffs, with them having home advantage, it was going to be really difficult. But that first game, we played really well. I wasn't confident about that Portsmouth game at all. Finishing fifth was, was personally terrible for me because I had banked on finishing third or fourth. So agreed to work until 3pm on the Saturday of that first leg. Now, whether it be at Doncaster, Portsmouth, Charlton, or it could have been potentially Peterborough, three o'clock, I could get to the game easy, mm-hmm. right? The only place I couldn't get to was the Stadium of Light. We finished fifth, meaning the home leg was first. Uh, yeah. So I couldn't even go to the first leg, work till three o'clock, and then had to just watch it. I had to watch it in a pub. I wasn't confident going into that Portsmouth game at all. Even after the first leg winning 1-0, I still thought Portsmouth was were, strong. were gonna do us at, um, at Fratton Park. Now, I went to Fratton Park, and that felt like it, it, it didn't feel like 90 minutes it felt like 90 days because not because it, I, I don't not because I'm saying it's a, it was a boring game because actually I really love watching them teams defend games. properly yeah. I actually honestly that's why I love Sam Allardyce so much because teams that defend properly I love that and that's what we did that day but it was just looking at, at your watch thinking what we're only 10 minutes in I thought it was nearly half time <laughs> that's what it was like the whole game and going through was just like, what a professional job. Yeah. And when I saw, when Charlton beat Doncaster, I thought they'd over-celebrated. And I thought, we've got this. We were very professional at the end of our game. They'd over-celebrated, in my opinion. And unfortunately, I was wrong. Yeah. But that, that performance against Portsmouth, I would say it was probably, I would actually argue it was our best performance of the season because we had a job. Mm-hmm. We knew what we had to do and we did it. Yeah. We did it without any fuss. Yeah, well, actually, would, would, interestingly, I actually think the home game was the best performance because we ended up seeing it out with 10 men. Yeah. I think the game plan was keep it tight and get a late winner. We got a goal and then we didn't bank on the fact that we were going to be down to 10 men, wrongfully down yeah. to 10 men as well. I actually watched that game with a, a, a referee who actually said, and I don't agree with him, he said it wasn't even a foul. He said it should have been a yellow card for diving. To the Portsmouth lad. Now, I actually, I actually think it was a foul and a yellow card. But, but nevertheless, we had that game plan. We got the goal, then went down to ten men, and still won. Yeah, it's a lot of courage. Lot Absolutely, of courage. really, really good. And it all ended up being so important because we came through the second leg. That obviously leads to the playoff final. Um, the, we took the lead through a bizarre goal. I think almost that goal threw everyone, it threw the Charlton players, but it also threw us because we mm. we went ahead without doing anything. Really, it just happened for no reason. Max Power then goes off injured and it kind of changed our game plan that day and it felt like we 
we couldn't we couldn't really get going from that point and neither team really created anything over the 90 minutes it's fair to say well we didn't have a single chance in the whole game yeah I think we had one and we scored a better shot which well yeah but, I mean that was a that, I mean that's a half chance and I, I, ever since Ledbetter signed uh, same with Max Power actually when he gets the ball a long way out I can't understand why they don't shoot more because they can really strike the ball so when Ledbetter got the ball there I was saying shoot and it would be, but it's, I don't think you can call it a chance. You know, he just did well yeah. to, to strike it so well, and it was, and it, and, uh, and it didn't go in. But the, the goal that we did score, I was kind of, you know, the, the ball was just safe at, at Nabi Sar's feet. And I was just kind of looking around at the, at the stadium. And as I turned back, the ball was going towards the keeper, and he missed it. And because yeah. I hadn't seen him pass the ball back, I thought, oh, it must be a. He must be passing it back just for a free kick or something. Couldn't believe it. Yeah. And to get that bit of luck, when we don't get a lot of luck, to get that bit of luck and not capitalise on it made it even harder. Yeah. Let alone the fact that it was pretty much the last touch of the game that they scored with. Yeah. And their goal itself, it's not actually been said much, but their goal, fair to say, was probably a foul. The... Their winner. Right. Well, I haven't... Mm. Have you had the, the heart to watch it back yet? Well, I, I've had to watch you back because I because I was at work the next morning. Um, so, I didn't see a foul in there. To me, it looked like the Charl- the, there was two Charlton def- uh, attackers next to Oviedo. One of them pushed Oviedo down. The other one was behind and headed it across goal. Well, the game should be replayed. Yeah, I in agree. Fact, in fact, <laughs> let, let, let's, do a, let's do a Swindon. Let's re- relegate Charlton for financial irregularities. Yeah. <laughs> right? like, you know, we got lucky with it once before. Let's, yeah, we could do it again. Let's have it again uh, t- 29 years later. Let, let's, let's try that. Um, I, I think that, like you say, there wasn't very many chances. I think Charlton just, just edged it, but we may have picked up in, in extra time, but we will unfortunately never know. But that was an absolute, like you said, when you said heartbreaking, that's how it felt. It, 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 it felt like my heart had broken. And I, I sort of decided that I was going to watch the celebrations. You see, when Portsmouth won the Checker yeah. Trade Trophy, I kind of just went inside. I couldn't be bothered with it this time I was like no I'm going to watch this because mm. I want to know how bad it feels now I want to see how good it'll feel next year when we go up as champions well hopefully we'll, <laughs> we'll go up with 10 games to go I, I watched it as well I, I stayed behind just I don't have anything against Charlton I you know, applauded them and such like I remember in the 2014 uh, Capital One Cup final as it was called back then when we lost to Man City I stayed until they lifted the trophy and in fact, most of the Sunderland fans did. This was a bit different. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, they they deserved a round of applause. They they they'd gone up. We hadn't. I I, I think they just shaded it. I mean, which is it's, it's hard to take. And I I thought that that we would just shade it. I knew it was going to be close. I don't begrudge them it, but phew, I really want to go up next season yeah. now. I really, I've I've loved this season. It's something I've always said if we don't go up at least I can look back and say this has been one of my favourite seasons of my Sunderland supporting life and you know it's I mean, my first game I was uh, I was still sick oh no no I, I was seven the first time I actually went to, to Roker Park and of all those seasons and we got relegated that season as well from what is now the Premier League this one is right up there Right, I love the 2014 when Poyet kept us up just because of the just the roller coaster that it was. I loved the Roy Keane one. I loved the seventh place finishes under Peter Reid and the promotions under Peter Reid. But this one is right up there with my favourite ever seasons. So doing it all again, I'm happy to do that. But I only want to do it once more, yeah. and I want it to have a better <laughs> ending. We're going to talk a little bit about the Checker Trade Trophy. I kind of left that till the end. The run itself was. It's a bit of an interesting competition because I think fans aren't really bothered about it until it gets to the latter stages. Though Sunderland fans did actually attend the trophy in pretty yeah. good numbers. We well, had played Newcastle that helped. That yeah. got, got a few a few more in. But we we took forty one thousand to Wembley. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a great day. Trafalgar Square the night before, Covent Garden, all that, and then the day itself was it was a really entertaining game. The old two two draw. What was your memories of, of that day? Well, the Czech Trade Trophy fan. This is this is um, this is a source of much embarrassment and ridicule to me. I couldn't go. <gasps> I had to go to Gibraltar to do a pool tournament. Another Again, pool tournament. Same thing. <laughs> all right. Um, and 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 th- th- I've got a point to make about this actually because th- towards the end, of the season, like the, the the Portsmouth game in the playoff at home, we 
I assumed would be sold out when it actually was quite a low attendance. And also, we had a lot fewer fans at Wembley the second time around. Now, there was quite a bit of criticism in amongst the fans about that. Maybe saying to other fans, why have you stopped going and stuff? It, 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 I mean, re remember that the other way, I was the other way around. I had to miss Wembley the first time around, but still went to Accrington away yeah. the next game, all right? And there would be plenty of fans who, you know, because there are reasons why people can't go. But these Sunderland fans this season, they, they'll have a budget. No matter how much money you've got, you've got a budget on how much you're going to spend for the season, mm -hmm. right? How many games you're going to go to. We had a lot more games than we expected because you've got all the checker trade trophy and the expense of Wembley. Yeah. And suddenly we're in the playoffs, two more games there, which turned out to be a third game, another trip to Wembley. You have to start sacrificing at some point just so you can afford to, to, to do it all. So I didn't really like that but amongst the fans, but I, I'm getting off the topic here, but just to kind of say that the other way, I was the other way around. I couldn't yeah. go to Wembley, but could go to places like, like Accrington, Bradford, Wimbledon and... Uh, Gillingham and all the all the rest that I went to, but the actual final the what I will never I was so proud of was all those scenes at Trafalgar Square, everyone all these social media sites and, and news outlets were talking about how great the Sunderland fans were the night before, um, the atmosphere at the ground sounded incredible from what I hear it was incredible and it's. One of those things that makes you very proud of your club. Mm -hmm. And I'm just devastated that I missed it. I wasn't that devastated that we lost the final. I wanted us to win, obviously. I was devastated that it was Catamore that missed because he's been my favourite player for, for several years now. Um, uh, devastated to miss it. But I, I, my overwhelming feeling after that day was actually just how proud I was of, of our own fans. And that's a nice feeling because a lot of football clubs don't have that. Yeah. Finally, the future. You know, what, what what do we what do you see happening this summer? Obviously, for the first time in a long time, we're going to have the same manager, um, which is something we don't normally see. He's had a year to build his squad, and then this summer he's going to be able to maybe make instead of ten additions, five additions, which might be good to keep a lot of this group together. Mm -hmm. But what, what do you see happening? Well, I mean, as long as Jack Ross doesn't get poached, but the the one good thing about that for us is his stock isn't as high because he didn't take us up. So hopefully, we'll still have him. Because um, I, I, I want I want the continuity. He knows his players. He now knows the club. Jack Ross does, and every manager I speak to to managers who are in work and out of work on a, on a pretty much a daily basis because of my job, and they all say every manager needs three transfer windows. Right? This is his third, and if you think of how hectic the first one was, all right, and the second one the frustration of how long it took to get the striker in, and also not knowing what's going to happen with Madger. This one, he can look at his squad and go, right, our squad is very close to being good enough for promotion. All right? A few tweaks here and there, and, and, and we go up. And there's no overhaul of the coaching staff, because if he's staying, then it's all the same. And that continuity will help so much, and he'll be so determined to go up because of the heartbreak at the end of, end of the season just gone. I think that he will... I think we need to add some pace. I think that is the main thing that we need to add a little bit more pace, uh, especially obviously we don't have Lewis Morgan anymore. Yeah. Although that my favourite signing would be to actually get him back, um, if possible, and he might try. But I think this is. I really do believe, despite the end of last season, this is a summer to be positive, and a summer that could be a lot more calm than in recent years. And do you think one of the things that I'm excited for is to see? Will Grigg and Charlie White get a full preseason mm -hmm. because we've actually we signed Will Grigg when he had a niggle and I don't think he ever caught full match fitness. Yeah, it's fair to say I think Charlie White was the same. This summer we're going to be able to get them into preseason, get them properly ready. Yeah, for the for the season ahead, and I think we're going to benefit from that. Will Grigg's proven to score at this level, so is Charlie White, and I think Sunderland fans will be surprised by how good they are. I, I couldn't agree any more, and the the. The thing which, which I don't think a single person watching this will, will agree with me on is that I actually really, really liked it when we played 4-4-2. <laughs> I love 4-4-2. I think that 4-4-2 is the only formation any club should ever play. Um, and so I'd actually like to see them play together. I know that's not going to happen. But you are right. Full pre-season, 
some some goals in some pre-season friendlies. Hopefully, we'll play some teams where they can just where they can bang a few goals. Yeah. In. Just when a striker is scoring goals, when the ball's at his feet, he can picture the ball going in the back of the net. If they're not scoring goals, you saw Charlie Wyke a few times one on one with the keeper, and you find the goalkeeper because mm-hmm. he couldn't really visualise putting it into the net in these game situations. Pre-season, a good pre-season will change that for both yeah. of them, and it and it's and, and that is that is vital. So I am, I think you're right on that, but I think it's the same for um, a, a few players as well because some players came quite late in pre-season. Some players have been in and out of the side. I think by the first game this season. Uh, I think Jack Ross will know exactly what his best team is, what his best system is, and that can that can only be a good thing. And getting off to a good start. Um, last time we got off to a goodish start. We could get off to a great start this time, and we'll never look back. Perfect. Well, I think that we've pretty much covered everything we needed to cover there. Um, so thanks for coming in, Tom. Thanks My for, pleasure. Any time. Yeah, yeah, chatting about brilliant. Season, yeah, I love, yeah, I love it. Stayed at the Academy of Light. Yeah, first time. First round. time I've been stadium light many times, but academy light because my report when I was a reporter rather than the presenter, I was always I've always been based in the south. Yeah. So I've never had the pleasure of coming here. Came, went to Charlie Hurley loads of times, loads of times, but this is uh, God, it's something else. Next level. A few, a few levels up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, thanks for coming on, and uh, good luck for for next season. Hopefully, you enjoy some time off. Oh, there'll be none of that. Yeah, no. <laughs> there'll be none of that. Transfer windows open, no That's chance, true. no chance. But Loads of pool tournaments to cover oh, as well. No, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> no, perfect. Thanks for coming on, Tom. Great to see you.